I'm Kelly Nunagoras, and I am the writer, director, producer of the documentary Heal. Heal is about um, basically the mind-body connection and how our thoughts, beliefs, and emotions affect our health. Um, and we're designed to heal. We have this really powerful, innate ability to heal. That's why when you break a bone, the doctor sets it, but your body is what heals and fuses and regenerates the bone. So we're designed to heal and um, our thoughts, beliefs, and our mind and emotions, our heart, uh, affect our physiology and biochemistry. So we can tap into those healing powers to um, help ourselves heal. And also to be aware of not just physical toxins in the environment, but like negative energy and stress and other things, how they can detrimentally affect our physical health. So that's what the film is about. There was not one like reason why I did the film. It was a series throughout my lifetime, like um, just little things that, that kind of sparked this fascination with the power of the human body and like just what a complex and intelligent system it is. And then also, you know, learning about energy and quantum physics and, you know, some people call it law of attraction and how what we put out in the world, you know, comes back to us and what we focus our thoughts on, you know, kind of manifest and most of us were kind of designed to focus on the worst case scenario out of that you know survival mechanism we're always scanning the environment for the tiger or the other enemy tribe or whatever it is back in our ancestral days um, so our brain is still operating that way but we have now we're like in a little bit safer environment so we think um, and so you know, it's, it, we can tap into the mind and start to train it to focus on the best case scenario, focus on what we want rather than that knee-jerk reaction to what we don't want and that fear. So I just became fascinated about that and, and started, you know, reading books by Bruce Lipton, Biology of Belief, learning about epigenetics and how we're not victims of our genes. Um, I have started going to Agape uh, and listened to Michael Bernard Beckwith's uh, sermons and they were so empowering about how, you know, much like we're responsible for what we create in our lives, you know, and, and, and he, he taught me that, you know, there's, there's infinite possibilities out there and, and we can, you know, co-create with life and, and that the universe and God and whatever terms you use is, it's a loving, it's a loving universe and a loving God. So, um, it's, you know, it's part spirit, part science and, uh, it's really empowering. So all of the, the experts and teachers I put in the film had empowered me in my life at some point. And I wanted to uh, put them all in one film because that's the medium I knew. That's what I grew up in uh, to empower people. Because as you know, more and more people are dealing with chronic illnesses and mystery illnesses and cancer is so common these days. It's mind blowing. So I thought the message was a necessary one to get out there fast. This might have been one of the little light bulbs that kind of was made me question how conventional medicine did things sometimes. So um, I went on a camping trip. Of course, my mom's last words were, just don't get sick, you know, and came home and I was like sick in bed for the whole week. And my glands um, were swollen the size of golf balls. And so I got better, went back to school, um, but my glands stayed like hard as rocks and kind of protruding out of my skin. And so we went to different doctors, pretty much first thing they did was put me on penicillin, antibiotics, test me for mono. Uh, mono came up negative, Epstein-Barr came up negative. Um, so, and the antibiotics didn't really work, same situation. So uh, went, you know, kept going to different doctors. Finally, they were like, well, six months later, was, they were still swollen. So they decided to do a lymph node biopsy to, to rule out some sort of lymph problem um, or cancer. So I went to Kaiser and they put me under and cut me open. And again, results were negative, benign, everything's fine. Just so again, inconclusive results and same problem, same issue nine months later. Um, and then one day I went to my mom's chiropractic appointment with her and I was just sitting in the room while the guy was adjusting her as he often did. And he felt my glands and he said, oh, try swirling or, or taking a shot, like one and a half ounces of uh, like a flavored rice vinegar or apple cider vinegar. 
So for the next, he's like, do that for a week and, and let me know if it does anything. So after about six days of taking a shot, I think my mom found like blueberry vinegar, so it kind of tasted good. Uh, the glands completely went down and it cleaned themselves out. So it was just this infection that my body was having a hard time clearing out and whatever the vinegar did to help it. So that was the first thing that I was like, oh, I'd rather go to a chiropractor than Kaiser at this point. You know, nothing against Kaiser. They do wonderful life-saving things. But that was my perception at the time. So, you know, that was the first, you know, you just have to assist your body. The Western medicine kind of jumps to cutting or medicating, you know, uh, killing through antibiotics or whatever. And sometimes it's very necessary in acute situations. But um, for mystery things, you know, and chronic things to just throw whatever at it and see what sticks, you know, that could be more harmful on the body than not. I think one of the biggest ahas I got, because um, I, I knew a lot of the stuff going in. I mean, I had read all the books by these experts that I put in the film. I was pretty well versed in their lessons and their teachings. Um, but one of the big aha moments was, you know, talking about the subconscious mind and how, you know, we're programmed from age zero in the womb to seven years old. Uh, as our brain waves are developing and our brain's developing, we're just basically soaking up the information from our environment, which is framing us and our personality as a human. So we're downloading other people's programs, essentially, like whoever our caregivers are, our mom, our dad, our grandparents, our teachers, who, whoever is around us a lot, we're just soaking up their energy, their behaviors, their reactions, their perception of life, their beliefs. Um, we're kind of just downloading that and that becomes our program. But none of us are ever taught that. None of us are ever aware of that. So, and it's subconscious. We're not aware um, that these, belief, these beliefs are running our lives. And so Bruce Lipton, many of them talked about it, but Bruce was like about 70% of our subconscious programs are negative and disempowering. So that is the root of our stress because, you know, those disempowering beliefs of I am not worthy, I am inadequate, um, life is not safe, I grew up in an abusive environment, whatever, um, you know, those, those color the lens through which you look at life, so it's all your perception. And so if you have this belief that life is not safe, then you're going to continue, you're only going to see things that are going to confirm that belief. So life is going to show you things that, that affirm that kind of. So that brings a lot of stress. Or if you believe you're unworthy, you're going to look out through that lens. And so... Um, to really become aware of your subconscious beliefs and kind of do that, you know, go back and visit any childhood trauma that's not processed or really think about the environment you grew up in and think about what these beliefs are, you know, because they, there's one woman in the film developed a certain belief as a child and then it was attracting relationships and experiences throughout her whole life that was just kind of reliving that that belief of I am pathetic. Um, so she married a guy that was probably not so great to her. I think a couple guys, <laughs> you know? And so it's just to become aware of that that is a reality and then you can go back and kind of discover what your subconscious beliefs are that are running your show. We have this stress mechanism called fight or flight that's meant to be a sprint. It's meant to give you all this energy and so you can run from the tiger and you survive, you know, back in the day. But what people are living in this like chronic, never-ending stress response, um, a marathon rather than a sprint, and it's just, it wipes out your immune system, it shuts down your higher brain functions, so all these people that are complaining of brain fog or fatigue or, you know, getting these chronic illnesses, stress is really like shutting off all of these really amazing systems in the body. So stress is a big thing, and stress comes from our subconscious beliefs that 70% are negative and disempowering. So... Meditation is a great way to relieve stress and also it does actually, they've, science is now catching up and they can measure all the beneficial physiological effects meditation can have on the body. It's not just calming the mind and relieving stress, it actually releases healing chemicals like oxytocin and relaxin and all these wonderful things, endorphins. But then they have all these, you know, in order to kind of go back and reprogram your subconscious mind, um, and kind of look at the belief systems that you have, 
you know, that's where you want to seek out different therapists that, that assist you because our body is the greatest healer, but sometimes we need someone that's trained in certain modalities like hypnotherapy or emotional freedom technique or inner child healing work or Reiki or whatever it is. There's so many modalities out there that can um, get reach you at the subconscious level and start to shift things. So that's where our body is the greatest healer, but you need to seek out assistance sometimes to access those parts of you that you're not aware of. All of the experts in the film basically agreed that stress is at the root of all disease, or 95% of disease. Disease, they call it. Um, and it could be chemical stresses, toxins, physical stresses, or obviously injury, and then there's emotional stress. But chemical, they, they consider toxins a chemical stress load. So um, again, like very basic, you want to have a, the cleanest environment, food you're putting in your body, you know, cleaning products you use, like reduce toxins in your life is going to be your base baseline. Um, but as far as the mind body connection, preventative stuff go, like just watching the film and, you know, something like forgiveness, you know, again, these are tools and it's, it's just awareness, um, of, of, of stuff you can work on right now so that there's no buildup so that it doesn't turn into disease because a lot of these chronic illnesses develop over time and it's based on accumulation, whether it's accumulation of toxins in the system, accumulation of emotional trauma that you haven't dealt with from your child and childhood and you keep kind of attracting the same experiences and you keep either suppressing it or, or it's too painful so you repress it. Reducing stress is a must, but also a lot of the experts talked about forgiveness being a necessary practice and in a serious healing journey. Um, they, they talked about how, you know, there's many sayings about forgiveness is like, you know, anger or anger is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die or something. It's like holding on to that anger and resentment is only hurting your physiology and your body and your spirit. So forgiveness is a big a big healing tool and a preventative tool. So, you know, rather than waiting till you get sick and then going back through that checklist of forgiving, it's like you can start to do those. Once you become aware of how that affects your body, you can start to forgive, go through that forgiveness work. You can start to um, meditate just to relieve old stress, but also create space so you're not taking um, yesterday's gunk into today. And that's what one of my favorite quotes in the film is Marianne Williamson. She says, you know, you shower because you don't want to take yesterday's dirt into today. It's the same with your mental status. You need to meditate every morning and in the evening so you can sh slough off all that stress and that, that, those thoughts and other people's crap. So meditation is really preventative in that way. Just learning how like nature is so healing. And, you know, as a modern society, we've kind of lost our connection with nature. So, you know, back in the day, we didn't have mattresses that were two feet off the ground. We were sleeping in the dirt on a blanket or a sheepskin or, you know, some sort of animal hide. Uh, we were barefoot or wore animal hide shoes. So we were constantly in connection with the earth. And the earth gives off these amazing negative ions that pull free radicals from your body. So it's like antioxidants galore when you're out in nature. Um, and so just to like, once you become aware of all these things, you can just keep, you know, realize, like disconnecting from your phone and that inundation of information that we haven't evolved to be able to process yet. I think the first step is just starting to observe yourself as the reactor. Um, so, you know, to start to learn about yourself by stepping outside of yourself and kind of not get fully consumed by the guy that cut you off and then you're in this like road rage, like start to become aware of your, when you're triggered because that, that's, those are like your signposts of, oh, there's a belief in there that's like not in alignment with my truth or whatever. So it starts with awareness and to start kind of paying attention, which might be a new <laughs> practice for people, but that's like the baseline. I mean, and when you meditate, like you create space and, and so that you can become an, an observer and you're not just like taken hostage and hijacked by your emotional reaction. You want to get to a place where you can respond to life, not just react based on these subconscious beliefs. So, um, starting to just practice awareness, notice when you get triggered, notice how your body is feeling. It's just like, 
I mean, I started to do that and I feel like I'm so in tune with my body now, like symptoms, rashes, uh, you know, your nose running after you eat something. That is all feedback. Your body is having a conversation with you. And if you're not paying attention because you're on Instagram or you're, you know, you haven't meditated, so your thoughts are just going a million miles an hour like a runaway freight train, um, then you're, you're going to miss those little signals. And, and, and then ultimately, the universe is going to smack you over the head with a major diagnosis or a major signal that you're, you have to pay attention to. So peop, one of the biggest preventative things is starting to practice that awareness, listen to your body, and understand that there's a conversation going on and it's, tr- it's your biggest friend, it's your ally. I mean, meditation is, for me and for pretty much most of the es- experts in the film, meditation allows you the space to become more aware of what's okay. going on to li- so you can listen to more to what's, what your body's trying to tell you so you can have more space to observe what's triggering you if, you're, if your partner says something that just like makes your heart close and you want to well up with tears it's like okay he's and he didn't he has no idea that he's making you feel that way like why are you getting triggered that's that's a past trauma that you haven't processed that that's a belief system about yourself that he's affirming you don't want him to (laughs) you know so it's like these are it's just starting to practice that awareness and meditation is a great great tool and also your intuition um one of the most fascinating parts of the film is Kelly Turner's research. She did research on all these people that had spontaneously healed from cancer. And she's like, we should be studying those people because there's not just one or two, there's thousands. And in every stage of every type of cancer, people have healed. So there's no cancer that's like 0% chance imminent death. It's like there have been people that healed. So let's find out what they did and let's grasp onto what they did and start to you know, produce those results more. And one of the biggest things is all of the people, she found nine things that all of these people and all different types of cancers did to, um, to, to heal. And one of them is, is listening to your intuition, you know? And again, meditation is a way to like quiet your thoughts, quiet that crazy stallion in your head so that, and breathe and connect. And then you can start to hear that still small voice within. Um, so that's one tool. There's many tools, walking in nature, anything can, that can be meditative, you know, prayer works for people. It's just quieting the mind, focusing on your breath, being out in space and nature and disconnecting from your electronic devices. Her nine essentials, those nine things that all of those people did to heal, um, were specifically to cancer, but it is my hypothesis that it applies across the board for any chronic illness. Um, and, and the fact that only two of them are physical and the fact that I believe it, it spreads across and applies to any sort of illness or disease, um, mean, you know, that's just like the perfect ratio to me, how, why healing shouldn't be, I mean, it's okay if you want to go the Western route or the conventional route, but just know that that's two out of nine that it's going to address. You really do need, especially if you're dealing with something serious, you need to address the mental, emotional, and spiritual, which are those other seven things. Um, so the two physical are radically changing your diet and using herbs and supplements, which again, that's how our ancestors for thousands and thousands of years have been healing people through herbs, you know, and stuff in nature, and then their diet, you know, whether it's fasting or only eating very, very clean or soups or whatever, whatever the body requires. So those are the two physical, the rest, mental, emotional, spiritual, um, two of them have to deal with emotions, which is increasing positive emotions. So we talk about Norman Cousins who healed himself, um, through laughing. Basically he, he, he was a doctor and he got the debilitating degenerative disease and he found, he treated himself with high doses of vitamin C intravenously. And then he found when he was watching comedic television shows or movies, uh, it would be like an anesthetic response in his body and he'd be, he'd be pain free for a couple hours, you know, watching comedy. So he just watched comedy on loop, 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 loop. And he eventually healed himself from this terminal illness. Um, so increasing positive emotions, laughter truly is the best medicine and love, um, releases oxytocin, you know, um, and all these healing chemicals. So joy doing, finding, finding your joy, like those things actually are helping you to heal. Um, and then releasing negative emotions. Um, so, you know, again, forgiveness work, 
she talks about a different couple different things in the film, but it's like, you know, burning all the letters from your ex-husband and getting rid of that resentment, whatever you need to do, but it's, it's releasing stuck emotions. Some, she, some people go to like a workout class or run a marathon or whatever you need to do to like, let it go. Um, then let's see, finding strong reasons for living is one of them. Um, so again, if you have close family, like kids, you know, you just like, you got to use that as your, your big motivator, you know? Um, the other is following your intuition. A lot of people talk about how they just found this strength in, and they, they finally, for the first time in their life, their doctor is telling them they have one year and they're just like, and they've started hearing these alarm bells go off. Like that's not the right treatment for me or whatever. So they started tapping into their intuition and it would lead them to where they needed to go. So that's cool. Um, taking your health back. So there's, the list goes on, see the movie for the rest, but uh, the, it's pretty fascinating that they all did these things. Every healing journey is so unique to that person uh, because everybody's past and environments and um, genetics are all different. So I, it, it, that's what it is. You really just have to find what works for you. And, and I truly believe this, and Marianne Williamson says it in the film, it's like once you set that intention, once you have that determination to heal, and you start to like ask the questions, you start having conversations with people, you know, the information that you're seeking will fall at your feet, whether it's a book, the healer that's sitting next to you on the airplane, the, you know, we've got this great worldwide web, lots of information on there. Like if you, like, if you seek, you shall find. Like, so, so just, yeah, make that determination and, and the information unique to you and the right people will show up. Heal, the title is so simple, but it's everybody's journey is going to be different. Some, it can happen spontaneously in an instant. Some, it's going to take five years, you know, or longer, who knows. Um, some people never heal, but they are on their deathbed and they go with such grace because they've forgiven their parents or whatever, whatever it is. There's like so many different uh, levels and types of healing. Um, you know, again, we go back to the regrets and the resentments. A lot of people are holding on to that acidic negative emotion, you know, and it's easy for us to do because we feel like if we're forgiving them, we're letting them off the hook, but no, it's actually, we're forgiving them because we don't want to carry their shit anymore, you know? So we're doing that as an act of self care. So, you know, reframing our thoughts around that, letting that go, rising above that and knowing that it created that trauma, that circumstance, whatever it was added to the character of who we are today. And it's over. We, if, if, we, if we don't forgive, we're constantly living that over and over and over. And it's just, you know, wearing us out and inside. You can picture it, right? Like it literally holding on to that pain and anger. Like it could show up as pain in your joints or a rash coming through your skin because your body is like, I cannot suppress this energy anymore. Like you have to let go. Uh, and I'm not saying that is anyone specific, but the other thing about not healing or not fully embracing um, the fact that you may need to do some mental, emotional, and spiritual work and not just take a pill or do the surgery. Um, like, you know, we're just conditioned to believe in the last 300 years, it's been doctors, medical school, you know, the smartest people become doctors, they know more than we do, and we just, we give all our power over to them. Um, but unfortunately, just the way that our medical system has evolved, you know, they're, they're taught in a specialized manner. They really only really know the in-depths in their workings of like one organ system or skeletal system or whatever. And they're not treating the body as a whole or they're not factoring in stress or emotions. Um, so, you know, when you give your power away, you're, you're in fear. And so you're going to believe everything that they tell you is possible based on bell curves that they've seen in people. Um, and if you're in that victim mindset where you're powerless, you know, you're going to kind of fall victim to whatever they say is possible for you. So what I'm trying to do in the film is go to the best doctors, get the diagnosis, but don't let them tell you what's possible for you. Cause there's someone was that 2%, someone was that 7%, that could be you. So like take your power back research and educate yourself as much as you can about what's going on with you and then realize 
that the mind plays a big part of it and past trauma and emotions and your beliefs about what's possible, you know, all play a factor. So, um, you know, that's another big factor that you, a lot of people don't heal because they fall prey to what the doctor says is possible. And that's just not the truth. That's one possibility. We're not really taught how to process emotions ever in life. So we're just learning how to process emotions, how our parents process emotions. And most of us did it, you know, their parents were lived through the depression. Like there's just a lot of passed down stresses and views of the world that are not, you know, empowering. Um, and so, you know, Greg Braden says in the film, if you were blessed enough to be raised in a family that like, you know, you sat down and you worked through your emotions and you let stuff go, great. But very few people have that experience. So, um, you know, again, you, if, if something is coming at you that you can't handle because it's too painful and, and your body literally, because you're a small child and you're in survival mode, you, it thinks it's going to die. Um, it, it either you suppress it because you just can't handle it or it's like so painful and traumatic that you repress it subconsciously like you just I don't even know it's there I don't even know it's happened it's that bad lock throw away the key um, and so those they talk about it being a memory that's not fully formed so it's just on this loop in your brain and stuck somewhere in your body it's like energy you know and they talk about the acupuncture meridians you know they connect to all of the organ systems and the emotions are somehow, it, it's like this wild, intricate system and every single thing is connected. So there's, there's practitioners out there. Darren Weissman is in the film. He has a lifeline technique where he has developed this code, which he uses muscle testing, which is a really awesome way to access the subconscious mind by, because your body doesn't lie. Um, and so he's figured out this way of like to find out when, like he uses muscle testing and he can pinpoint like what age, what happened, what emotion is trapped and like, it's crazy. But there's practitioners that have these amazing things like theta healing or lifeline technique um, that can, that can kind of go, take you back there. Because again, you suppress or repress this trauma and you don't even know where it exists or how to get rid of it. You know, hypnotherapy is another thing. So I was very conscious of not, you know, poking the big pharmaceutical bear. All of the experts basically said, look, conventional Western medicine, drugs, surgery, they, they have their place, you know, in acute emergency situations where you need to stop that infection because it'll kill you. Of course, let's douse the thing with antibiotics, you know, but then be aware of how to rebuild your gut health afterwards. You know, it's again, just awareness and education. Um, if you need the surgery, emergency gallbladder surgery, do it, you know, if there's anything, you know, back surgery, a lot of times like back, the surgery, unless it's an emergency should be your last, last, last result. You should try all these other things because once you cut, you most likely can't go back to that, this amazing body mechanism system that's designed to heal, you know, cutting that, that kind of disrupts the, the great wide web of connection and intelligence. So um, it's not anti-Western medicine at all. It's just saying like, look, Western medicine is great for about 10% acute illnesses is what Deepak Chopra says. Let's call it 10 to 20%. Chronic illness, you know, it's again, it's that, it's that two by four hitting you over the head because you've been ignoring this conversation that's been going on for a very long time and it just keeps building, building, building until you can't ignore it anymore. So that's when you go to the nine essentials and address mind, body, spirit, and diet. I stopped reading comments on Amazon. A lot of them were like, Deepox, a quack, or this is, you know, this is all BS. And we had a few ranters on, on Facebook, but honestly, there's like 2% of the feedback. Everybody else is just like, you know, because I do base it in science. There's a lot of science backed. And science is finally being able to prove what ancient wisdom has been practicing successfully for 5,000 years. There's a few of the experts in the film were, one was a um, organic chemist that worked for pharmaceutical companies developing cancer and heart drugs. He wanted to save lives with his knowledge. He is a scientist. I mean, to the point of being a nerd, like that science is all he's ever known. And when he was built and making these drugs um, and they were testing the drugs and he saw how powerful the placebo was. And in some cases, 
70% of people taking a sugar pill was having the same reaction as someone taking the actual pill. He was like, whoa, I got this is like, I got to study that. That is, that is all the mind. That is all belief that, that this pill, this sugar pill that is innate is going to have an effect on my body. And then they, because of their belief, their brain actually releases that same chemistry that's in this group over here that's actually in the pill. Your body's creating the chemistry that you believe you're taking to produce that same effect. Like that is the mind-body connection, that placebo effect. So he's like, so he left the pharmaceutical industry to study as much as he can because he's like, we should be exploiting the placebo effect because there's no harmful side effects. So how do we do that, you know? And that's, and then Kelly Brogan, who's brilliant, but she was a conventional psychiatrist, just like antidepressants, you know, she was just, she's like, perfect health is one prescription away. You know, that, that was her belief. And then she got sick with Hashimoto's thyroiditis and everything changed, you know? And she also got pregnant and she started going, oh shoot, I don't think I wouldn't want to take an antidepressant if I'm pregnant. So she started questioning things. And then through her own healing journey, she turned around Hashimoto's in six months using diet, exercise, and, and supplements. And she was just like, so now she's complete opposite. She's a holistic psychiatrist. She has poured through all of the research. I mean, she's as science-based as you can be. And she refuses to prescribe a drug to anybody. And she takes people holistically off bipolar meds, depression meds, like gnarly medication back to health again holistically. And I think that's amazing. It is a very tricky conversation and it's like very frustrating for me out in the real world because people have their beliefs and I want to help, uh, but they're just, you know, they're just not thinking along those lines yet, you know? Uh, either was Kelly Brogan however many years ago. It's just like you believe what you know you know, you know? Um, so I love when I think Bruce, Dispenza, Chopra, they all said, you know, genetic, like heredity and defects and all of that, of, like the, the ones that, that what we're talking about in the film won't have any effect on is about 5% um, of, your, of our DNA. There's like 5% that it's like, okay, if, if you have that gene defect or that's turned on or you're born with this or that, then there's, you know, this mind-body thing is not going to affect it. But 95% of the other gene combinations or quote-unquote defects are actually, you know, you can express and turn on and off a different scenario. Like the overarching um, storyline here is that the medical establishment has kind of taken our power away a little bit because and put the power in the hands of the, the guys in the white coats or the women in the white coats and 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 the pharmaceutical companies are as the saviors you know we need drugs and we need a doctor to tell us or a surgeon um, to save us and so it's just that victim mindset of like oh we're victims of our genes and oh only the doctor can save us you know Dispenza talks about it he's like you know we live in an age of information and ignorance is a choice like, so just to educate yourself as much as you can, that's what I'm hoping my film will just turn on a light bulb so then people can dive deeper in, in whoever resonates in the film, read their books or read the science behind your particular chronic illness or whatever. So just that victim mentality is not optimal for healing. You've got to take your power back and learn that there is so much we can do. And again, 5% of the time, you know, certain cases or in an emergency, acute case, like, you know, there's not much we can do and we have to hand over our power to someone. But 95% of the time, we need to take our, power, our health back into our own hands and uh, educate ourselves and understand that we do have more power than we're taught. My regular practices include meditation. I think that that is essential. I actually, after you practice for a while, you crave it. Like you like a shower. It's literally like a shower for your mind. Um, and it just creates space so you're less reactive in the world and it releases all sort of, you know, puts your body into that rest and repair mode and takes you out of fight or flight, which most of us hang out in throughout the day. So meditation is key. You know, they say do it twice a day, once in the morning, once in the afternoon. I don't hold to any rigidity. Sometimes I do it once in the morning. I do it when I can, 
but I try to do it for 20, 30 minutes. And um, depending on my energy levels, I will do transcendental using a mantra or, but if I'm wiped out and I just need to like put my body into that rest and repair, I'll listen to a guided meditation. Um, you know, so again, I, I have a strict meditation practice, but not rigid. Um, and the other thing is eating, you know, what I put in, uh, it's eating. However, like I still, I find that I can eat whatever I want. I just eat the cleanest versions that I can. So I, I personally eat meat. Um, I haven't gone full vegan. I refuse to watch <laughs> films that are going to make me go there cause I'm not ready yet. Um, maybe I will never be, but like, I only will eat grass fed, uh, naturally raised, you know, beef, um, and fish wild caught, you know, so, and, and organic vegetables and fruits. And, you know, I try to eat local and in season and organic, but again, not rigid. Um, uh, I'm just aware that like, if I'm watching football and eating some French fries, you know, I have an awareness of what that's going to do, uh, on my body. And, you know, I balance, I work out a little harder the next day, drink a lot of water, whatever it is, but I'm just, so I don't have any fear around food anymore. Um, and that's a big thing for people. And Nina Morjani talks about it. She was so fearful of getting cancer because her best friend died of cancer um, that she everything she was eating, there was fear around it. But now she's healed from cancer and she'll you know drink a glass of champagne. She'll eat an ice cream and she'll just bask in the joy of that. And that's not going to affect her. And it's not, you know, again, it's not going to accumulate in your body. So it's also the kind of the energy you put and the beliefs around what you're eating. So, um, and then earthing, I love really connecting with nature. I try to do that every day. Um, I try to put my feet in the ground. I have a great lawn to do it. And, um, you know, I'm writing the heal book right now. So that's the chapter I'm on, but like nature is so healing. Um, I love the ocean. So as much as I can get to the ocean, or stick my feet in the grass or lie in the grass. Like I really do feel similar effects to meditation. It just lowers your blood pressure. Um, it, it has that antioxidant effect on your body because it's pulling out free radicals, that, that earth's energy. So those are three things. Diet, you know, eating clean as possible, but not being rigid. Um, meditation and, and connecting with nature as much as I can. Chiropractic is another thing. I've been an athlete my whole life. So I've always like, my knee will go out or my hips or so, and I have a little slight scoliosis. So I see him just for maintenance. Um, and also, again, it just like gets all your energy centers and your meridians flowing and in line, stretches your spine and gets everything aligned so I don't, hopefully won't like shrink with age. That's my goal. But so chiropractic, acupuncture, if I'm really feeling like there's a stressful situation in my life emotionally, um, I have Peter Crone in the film is my like, he's, he's a mind coach, but he'll like, I have one conversation with him and he can just reframe it and like really, you know, help me just free up all that stress and like I'm breathing deep, deeper. So, so that could be a therapist for someone. Um, but I really feel like you need someone to talk to, whether it's your best friend or a trained professional, um, to, to really just like process and, and let go of stuff, you know? Uh, so you're not holding on to that because I try to process it myself and I'm like, <gasps> I can't breathe. I mean, you know what I mean? So like to have someone like that, that's that for the emotional stress is, is really good. So, so you're not, so you're getting into the practice of letting it go in the moment rather than sitting on it, you know, dealing with it later.